Hi, it's Sean from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. We are back today for another puzzle piece. I love these. Yeah. Uh, these are done by Jen Schachter for South by Southwest. Uh, she worked on them with Adam. And basically she took patent drawings, traced over top of them in Illustrator, layered them, and then did these crazy laser cuts. And they are so intricate and beautifully done. How many puzzle pieces are there total? There's nine all together, okay. and each one has a theme. So we did, uh, I think this is the manufacturing uh, one. We're going to do the computer one today. My favorite. I, I figured it was appropriate since you were in today. Um, so what we've been trying to do with this is uh, pick some unique materials to try out to, mm -hmm. to give them a little pop of color here and there. So we had our Lego and the screwdriver on this one, and we got some other cool stuff to try out today. So let's take a look at what we have. <clears throat> so today we're gonna be using the base woods again. We got uh, birch, maple, and walnut. But we also have these. So this is the one that I'm most excited about. It looks like metal. Right? It's metalized, it's some kind of metalized uh, treatment on acrylic, but they have like brass, copper, gold, and we have the silver aluminum today. Cool. And it has a black core, so very much like the screwdriver we did before, if we burn through the top, it will actually have really nice detail. That's awesome. So yeah. how did you how do you know how, what settings to use for something like that? Did, have you already figured that out, or is that a setting that comes with Universal? I am going to, we're just gonna go with straight up acrylic uh -huh. and see how that goes. Okay. I found with the ones that you have to burn through to the core, you have to tweak it just a little bit, but I think I think we'll be able to do it with like one or two tries. Okay, cool. And then we also have um, very similar uh, to this is we have the green and white, which we're gonna use for some circuit boards today. Perfect. Um, so I'm super excited to try these out and I'm really looking forward to how this turns out. So we're gonna start with the green and then we're gonna move through all of different materials and then we're, we'll uh, be ready for assembly. Universal actually has a really nice feature called Auto Z, which once you have the head of the laser adjusted in relation to the bed, mm -hmm. uh, you can type in the thickness of the material and it will put it at the optimal focal distance for that material. You thickness. type that in on the computer? Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, that works great. The problem you run into with that is like, let's say you're, you're, you're cutting like half inch plywood or something. Right. Half inch plywood is not necessarily always half inch it's plywood. It's ballpark half yeah. inch. Yeah. So what you would really want to do is measure that and type in the exact number, or you could actually just adjust the head to the material itself. So we're just going to sh show how that's done okay. right now. Um, so we're going to fire up the laser. I love this sound that it makes. Oh, that's, <laughs> wow. That was like red it's alert. like Star Trek, right? Yeah. All right. So the Universal has interchangeable uh, lenses. So right now we have the two inch, which is like the standard lens that's like all purpose. Okay. Um, you can put in other heads for like really fine detail or lenses for really fine detail. You can put another lens in for like cutting really thick material. Um, but for the most part, for the stuff that we're doing and most people, the two inch, the standard is fine. Is it, does it correspond to material thickness entirely? Yeah, okay. because basically it, it's it's affecting where the, the 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 sweet spot in the laser is focused. Oh, and like how much of that it can even cut, I, yeah. I imagine. Okay. So what will happen is if you don't have the laser adjusted correctly, there is actually a little bit of curvature to uh -huh. the cut. And if you don't have it right and you're doing something really thick, you'll get a curve. Got cut. it. So, yeah. So the two ways that we can tackle this, uh, we can use the Auto Z and we can adjust it right to the cutting bed. Okay. And what they give you is they give you these little tools that are adjusted for that particular lens, right? Two inch. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> all we're gonna do is we're gonna use the softer here to move the head over a little bit. You're gonna move that over top of this. Yeah. What is this called? A this is the cutting bed. Cutting bed? Okay. Yeah, so it has the honeycomb on it to allow for cutting through. We can actually take this out completely, and if we were, in, like, say, like etching or engraving something really tall, right. you could take this out to gain a bunch of space and put it right on the bed. Now, you don't want to do that for cutting. Because you don't want to go you through You want it. that honeycomb <laughs> right. underneath, right. So the way this works is really simple. Uh, it has this little notch that's right here, and that rides right along the bottom of the carriage of the, the lens. Okay. And you basically just raise the bed up and down until that hits right on the bottom. Now you're pressing a button on the actual... Yeah, I'm using the up-down for the Z axis. Laser cutter. Yeah. And how much is that going up and down each time you press it? I don't know the exact amount, a but it's a bit. small, yeah. Yeah. And the way they did this is since this has this little slope on it, it's not going to like get jammed in there and break. 
if you go a little too high, it'll just make this like pop yep. out, so, which is which is great. Okay. So now with the focus, so we have this uh, in relation to the, the print bed, mm -hmm. we can use the auto Z and type in the exact thickness mm -hmm. and just cut that way. The other way you can do it, which is even more precise, but you would have to kind of do every time, is you can do the exact same thing, but with the material on top. So then it's focused in relation to the thickness of the material. So uh, I've been using the auto Z and it works great. And it's easy to type in the thicknesses. Right. And with acrylic, I've, and the, the, the thinner ply, what I find that the thicknesses are pretty spot on. And we have calipers. If you needed to, yeah. you can just measure that right up and type it in, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have, uh, this has a nice protective coating, which is going to help with uh, prevent scorching. Mm -hmm. um, last week, uh, last time when we did the Lego pieces, it had a really, really thick paper on the blue acrylic. I had to actually up the laser a bit because it wasn't etching the whole way through the paper. Oh, funny. Okay. But with this stuff, this is so thin, we shouldn't have any problems with that. So we're just going to pop that at the origin here in the corner. And that's because you, that's where you have it set up on the computer screen? Yep. Okay. So we have these set up in Illustrator. This artboard is, represents the bed, the printing bed. And then we have our piece on here. And you can even, you know, you can use guides if you need to, to like position things. Um, you can also draw a, a green box around this to represent your material size. And in the universal setup, uh, anything that is a, the right color green and the right stroke is ignored. Okay. So you can use it as your own personal guides when you import it into the universal software. And we have red is going to be cut lines, black's going to be etching, raster etching. And you, you literally just hit print. And you print you pick the laser cutter as the printer. And you're not making any modifications to the colors. This is just as you got them off of Thingiverse. No, and that's, that's actually a really good question. Let me uh, show you Jen's really quick. So Jen's, uh, Jen did a really, really nice job where she gives you a color map to show you the different levels. Okay. Right? Or the different layers. Then she did an artboard for every single one. Now, due to the way different um, uh, laser cutting software works, I had to take this in and remove the background color, and then I just had to select all the outlines or the paths and make sure they are the right color and the right stroke to be recognized by the universal. Uh -huh. It doesn't take long. I mean, you just, I literally just select the outside, take off the fill color, make the stroke the right color and the right thickness. It, it didn't take long at all. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, Jeremy, the Universal made quick work of everything. These look awesome. Yeah. And I think you got the cuts exactly right. I mean, the etch looks like a hand etched cut, and it, so it's perfectly mapped to the to the patent drawing. Yeah, that's that's all Jen. Yeah. Uh, so Jen Schechter, who did this, uh, traced all of this stuff in Illustrator. I, it took weeks. It's gorgeous. Um, but I am in love with this material. There are metalized acrylic. Mm -hmm. um, it looks it, like aluminum or something. <laughs> it is awesome. So we have some other ones to try later, some like brass and copper, but I am absolutely in love with this stuff. And uh, Adam popped in, he said it's what he used for the plaque on his uh, shining maze. But he has a really nice little plaque that says the overlook uh, maze. Yeah. And he used this stuff it's for It's perfect it. for that. It looks great. Um, so uh, we, we had talked about this before, but a lot of times when you're doing, especially wood, you want to mask, uh, put, like have some kind of protection over top, like mm -hmm. masking tape. It prevents scorching. We just don't have any big masking tape right now. So the scorching is minimal, but I'm going to hit this with just a little bit of sandpaper real lightly to clean it up. Oh, that'll um, get rid of it? it? It really does. And it's, it's like just a few. Okay. Yeah. Why don't I start so on the, Ar the Arduino? The Arduino part. Yeah. 
We're just using super glue for this, right? Yes. Now, okay. Jen originally used wood glue for everything, but we made the bold choice of going with super glue gel, and it worked just fine. Yeah. So I'm gonna glue, so what Jen did here is there's the first layer that has the guides for gluing, and then she actually has a duplicate piece underneath just to give it a little extra thickness so the puzzle pieces interlock well. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna glue those together. You could also just cut that out of a thicker piece of wood, but then you gotta buy two different ones. Um, and she did something which I absolutely love is that she has pieces that overlap. So these stick out and actually overlap with other puzzle pieces, which I think is really cool. Yep. So, so that they don't just become puzzle interlocks, but they actually just overlap on top of yeah. them. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. All right. Uh oh. There's a piece of plastic left on that guy. Oh, I wonder no. if that's true for all of them. I think the plastic is on both sides on that one. On the black. Yeah. All right. I don't think they put it on both sides for the multicolor because they make the assumption that the the you know the thin top layer is going to be the top no matter what. All right. Now, last time we did this, we we had some parts that weren't aligned well, and we heard about it on the interwebs. So I'll try to do better. Can I borrow some of that paper or something? Thanks. Yeah. That's what I brought it for. Yes, yeah, some, some of these Arduino parts are really tiny. I'm amazed that it actually laser cut the pins that are on the headers. Yeah, and they didn't fall off or something. Yeah. Get, yep. Laser beams, man. You know, while we were cutting, I watched about six videos on how lasers work. And I think I need to watch another six before I can even talk <laughs> about it. But it's fascinating. I still don't, all I know is that uh, the Universal uses a metal laser versus a glass tube laser. Okay. Um, and there's multiple advantages of that and they, they actually build them in house, which was- They I build their own lasers? Yeah. That's interesting. So you can actually send them in for rebuild uh, and uh, service right to the factory. I did cool. learn that the first laser was built in 1960, only really? four years before Goldfinger, where James Bond was almost <laughs> cut in half. So that was like really cut cutting yeah. edge technology. That was like obviously <laughs> very scary technology. Yeah. All right. We got this pretty lined up. That's cool. I, I love this binary code. I wonder what it means. <laughs> I would like to think that there's a deeper meaning in there that that Jen I wouldn't be surprised. In. She chose yeah. a lot of interesting things here. All right. So you've got three layers. You're three deep. Yeah. So you can see I'm already getting the charred fingerprints mm -hmm. all over everything, but that's okay. Part of um, so we've got our Arduino, and I think the Arduino just is, is those it? two stacks, those so I think there. we can go ahead and put that on. Bam. Yeah. And we're super gluing plastic to wood? Yeah. All right. It worked last time, and it'll work again. The, uh, the first one we did here had all of these little tools, which took much longer, <laughs> but they look great. More pieces? Yeah, you can see it has all the Japanese tools there. Uh -huh. and, and it's really cool, because you can actually see all the little teeth on it, like the actual saw teeth cut on the laser cutter. I suppose laser cutters are good for cutting uh, gears mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Yep. You can cut Delrin, which is mm -hmm. very strong and actually kind of self-lubricating. So you could definitely do some gears and mechanical parts. That looks awesome. Delrin's a little more flexible than acrylic. It seems like a little yeah. more robust, right? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, uh, wh why don't you get the mainframe on there and I'll start gluing our operator together. So this is the next layer? Yep. All right, look at that. <laughs> that is so cool. That's beautiful. I want to make oh. everything out of this metalized the, acrylic. The dimension here, where you've got the, yeah. what are these, uh, not cassette tapes, but magnetic tape mm -hmm. reels inside the compartments. That looks so good. All right. There's no back layer on this uh, metallic, right? No. It doesn't look like it. No, I think it's just on the front. I will say that the one disadvantage to using the super glue is if you get a misalignment on your layers, it can um, make it much harder to fix. 
You don't have the work time that you do with the wood glue. Right. All right. And apparently we were wondering, uh, this is a punch machine that is off to the side here. Punch machine, like mm -hmm. the punch For cards? punch cards, yep. Now, this machine would read them, you think, or? I think this is actually what made them. It would write them. I, you know what, maybe they did both, I don't know. I don't know how that worked. A read-write. Yeah. Interesting. That is cool. It'd be fun to make a, make a punch card machine. Like, maybe. <laughs> is that our next bit stack? Yeah, you could tweet <laughs> using punch cards. <laughs> That'd be amazing. All right. So why don't you go ahead and put the last piece of the punch machine on there, and then all, right. all we have is our operator left. Uh, where wh this is? It actually cool goes right here. Machine. Oh, it goes on top. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh uh, yeah. Cool. Yep, yep, yep. There's actually some. I don't know if it's actual if it's sap or if mm -hmm. it is. Could be. Do you think uh, sap left glue. In there? It's either yeah, glue it's from the particle board or sap, but it, there's a stickiness that I'm getting from the, the cut on the birch. I'm going with glue. Yeah. That's looking good. All right. Bam. I love this. The silver, the silver is excellent. Yes. Well, the Arduino is perfectly colored too. You, yeah. You made some nice artistic choices here. <sighs> Look at that. I bet she's important. Do we know her name? I, I don't know if that's actually based on a person or... It's, or, it's just, just, a, yeah. just a drawing from yeah. the patent. So, unfortunately, <laughs> we did not make puzzle pieces that fit together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, but we're, we're going to make all, you all were, nine, you right? Were yeah, we were coming in today and I wanted to do the computers and electronics, mm -hmm. which happens to be the first one. And we did this one because it had the Lego on it, but this is the centerpiece. But this is looking really good so far, and I'm looking forward to trying out uh, even more uh, materials mm -hmm. on some of the other ones. Uh, I, I wanna try maybe some fabrics and leather on some of them, uh, which would be cool. And we definitely have uh, some more of the metalized uh, acrylic to try out. Different so, colors. Which I absolutely love. So. Thanks for bringing me in on this one, that was Thanks fun. Thanks for helping out. Um, it's great. Uh, Jen's uh, files are available on Thingiverse. We'll put a link in the comments there. And you can check them out yourself. And maybe what I'll try to do uh, down the road is upload the uh, ones that I tweaked for the Universal mm -hmm. because there's a little bit of additional work. So if you have a Universal, you can just put, put it on right on there. But uh, tune in next time for our next puzzle piece. We'll, we'll to yet to be determined which one that is. Maybe it depends on our guest. Uh, but I'm Sean from Tested. I'm Jeremy. And thanks for tuning in. Laser beams. <laughs>